to come to say hi to the camera. Hello YouTubers. Hello. Good morning everybody or afternoon, evening, whichever part of the day you are currently at. For me it is half past seven in the morning and I've just gotten ready for the day ahead and I thought it'd be a fun idea to take you guys with me, show you a little bit of what my day entails. Hello everyone, my name is Agnes, welcome back to my channel where I share all things nails and more. So I do have two clients and a whole bunch of things that I need to get done. I do work from my home salon so I'm literally in my bathroom at the moment. We're going to go downstairs. Before we do anything I need to feed the cat and I need to sort myself a coffee. Without any further ado, let's get on with it. So if you're new to my videos, our kitten is called Freya. Are you hungry? We got her at Christmas time, so she is now almost nine months old. Freya is very much attached to my hip, so you will see her pop up a lot in this video. So here I am sorting her food balls and ugh, making a mess in doing so. Just a disclaimer here, I am not being stingy with her food. I give her her wet food four or five times a day, half a packet each time, because she can't manage the full packet in a one go. And if it sits out and goes dry, she certainly won't eat it then. She's a high maintenance princess. While Freya tucks in, I proceed to make my coffee. It looks like a tedious process, but I've gotten so in the swing of doing this. Ever since Reese's dad, those of you who don't know, Reese is my partner. Ever since his dad got us this coffee maker, honestly, my coffee game has changed so much for the better because I used to drink the Nescafe caramel latte sachets, which I thought were bloody brilliant, but compared to this, yeah, my coffee game has definitely gotten a lot better. So shout out to Reese's dad. Thank you. I know you're watching. And if you're in need of a coffee machine, I'm pretty sure it's from Amazon. It is a really good coffee machine. Anyway, so here I am just pouring in my frothed up milk and oh, that looks lush. Going in with my brown sugar, going in as if I'm doing nails. Bloody hell. <laughs> my syrups are from TK Maxx and they are really good. If you're looking for coffee syrups, always go to TK Maxx. You get so much more for your money as opposed to the supermarkets. So that was my really long journey to the salon, opening up the door, turning on the lights and just getting everything ready for my first client. That coffee really hit the spot. Oh yeah. Popping on my apron. This one is from NAF. And on goes the TV. And then I realised the flamingo light next to the Rodeo Knights Joe Polish collection has run out of batteries. So I'm quickly changing them over. Not realising the ones that I've put in it are also half used. So it's still not as bright as it should be. Anyways. So my first client is in at half past eight, which is in 10 minutes time. Now I think I have three hours in between the two clients. And then my second one, I believe is one o'clock or half one. I use Navy Pro's nail file system. So I'm getting my client's nail file out. How are they looking? Her nails were looking really good. They had been on for four weeks and it's just a plain colored builder gel she's got on. So we're going to infill that. I've sanitized her hands using nail orders, sanitizer spray in one in a million, which I always refer to as smelling like 60 men in a bottle is the best way I can describe it. So here I am just going in with my e-file which is loaded with Willow Academy's drill bits in Penny. Just removing the bulk of the product down to where I can see the natural nail slightly shining through to make sure there's not any lifting or bubbles and then I'm tightening down the length with that as well. And then with my hand file I am fixing the shape and edging the natural nail just where it's grown back in. And with my e-file and drill bit in flame I am lifting and pushing back the cuticles, working my way from left to right and then right to left nipping away any dry cuticle before wiping the nails with acetone to dehydrate for product application. First going in with Pure Bond, which just helps with adhesion. Pop it in a lamp to cure, and then I'm going in with a coat of Pure Foundation in Clear, followed by Pure Build in Kiss. Now I'm doing a thin coat of the Builder Gel, and then I'm going to go in with a blob, and then I'm guiding it where I want it to go using a long liner brush. Once it's leveled and I am happy with the structure, pop it in the lamp to cure, and I am working on both hands at the same time. I do this one nail at a time though because what we don't want is the product flooding into the sidewalls. 
Skipping forward, I am wiping off the sticky residue and I do refine the nails after application just to make sure that they are super smooth and even. Although because Hona's Builder Gels are HEMA free, I am avoiding filing the free edge because that can cause chipping. Anyway, I've dusted off and wiped the nails with acetone and we decided to do a coat of the gel bottles Oyster over the top just to add a little delicate shimmer to the nails. Lastly, I'm going in with Hona's Super Shine Top Coat to top coat the nails. For cuticle oil, I've recently been using Navy Pro's Cuticle Balm, which is insanely good. I'm scooping it out of the tub, putting it on the back of my hand, and then I'm just applying it on all nails. It is so satisfying to watch how this just melts from a cream-like consistency to oil. I am going to take a photo of these nails, so if I get any of the cuticle oil on the nails, I just spray a little bit of IPA on a lint-free pad, and then I just glide it over the nails. And then I'm placing an A3 sheet of white paper down, and I switch off my Lumi lamp and I just use the IKEA lamp for my pictures. This is so I get a nice glow reflection as opposed to like a line. And that's it. So nice. Here's the photos I took as well. I do offer my clients if they would like some hand cream on, which comes with a little massage as well. Before we see my first client off, let's just take a moment to appreciate the tan line absolute tan goals wow so it's now 10 o'clock i've just finished my first client and i'm going to clean my table and then i'm going to do some swatches that i've been meaning to do for the longest time i've got the Hona's areas edit to swatch a fabulous collection of colors which i used to do my nails that i have on just now while I clean and tidy my table, I'll let you watch the video. Just to be awkward, I started halfway through her albums with my thumb being 1989. Working my way back, I did red for my index nail, followed by speak now for which I did a splash of purple of her dress and painted Taylor's silhouette over the top. Fearless is this gorgeous gold ombre with Taylor Swift written across the nail. And yes, I did require a finger podium for this. The very first album being Taylor Swift, I did a green blue ombre butterfly. Moving over to the other hand in the latter part of the eras, I did reputation on my thumb, which my partner claims looks like Rylan with red lips on. Oops. Moving over to my index, swirls of pink, blue and green topped with a black heart is the inspo behind Lover, followed by Folklore which is a grey ombre with different shades of trees for that dimension, and a beige French tip for the ring finger with black detailing for that plaid coat effect from Evermore. Along comes my little furry friend Freya checking out what all the commotion is about. Last but not least, Midnight's is a sparkly navy blue ombre with white stars. Not being much of a swifty myself, but I think with all my research and planning I've definitely captured the air within this set and somehow I feel like I've grown closer to Taylor Swift. <laughs> anyway here's the finished result and yeah I just had so much fun with this set and also doing my left hand on camera was a bit nerve-wracking I'm not gonna lie. So I've bought these oval shaped nail swatches which I'm going to use to swatch this collection. The rest of my gels are swatched with these square tip swatches which I've recently been thinking looks quite bulky, not so neat. So I am considering swatching my entire collection into the oval ones and I need to go through all of them anyway sometime soon. So let me know if that's a video that you would be interested in watching. So I'm not swatching these in any particular order nor am I trying to make this look aesthetic i just need to get these done okay so let's talk about this collection the colors are super pigmented except from the sparkly black night fever to get full coverage you would definitely need to do a coat of black underneath like i did on my nails um the rylan clark nail as reese calls it my favorite definitely is night sky which is a really deep sparkly navy blue and the camera really doesn't do it any justice. So I have been doing two coats of all of these gels and I've just edited out the bit where I cure them because well we all know that we gotta do that in between coats. Anyway Freya making an appearance presumably as a gentle reminder to myself that it is time for the child to be fed <laughs> so off camera i did top coat all the swatch sticks and now it's time to bring out the dymo my beloved sticky label maker so i'm just typing up all the names and printing the labels out as the label comes it's a bit too wide for the swatch sticks so i'm trimming them down by cutting about a millimeter or so off the top and the bottom 
Then I just cut the individual names off before sticking them onto the sticks. I like to organise them into order before looping them onto the hanging loop thing. And there we have it. Now I'm just putting all of those bottles up onto my grand wall of gel polish. I've recently changed the gel bottle ones onto their side to make more space to incorporate Hona and other brands of gel polishes. But yeah, like I said, I do have to go through my whole collection at some point, so let me know if you want to see a video on that. And then the lights go off and the apron comes off. Food time again. Free as food get served first because apparently she's a starving little baby with little to no patience. <laughs> she is a little bit dramatic. Perhaps a little is an understatement. Let's go with very dramatic. What is with the foot kick? Anyway, moving on, I'm making another coffee and yes, I am demonstrating addictive behaviour and no, I am not denying it. <laughs> also, just look how cute this jug is. Reese got it from Timu, I think, along with some other coffee making gadgets, but this is just the dinkiest thing ever. What? You want to see what's going on? Yeah? And this is your sign to get yourself a coffee if you haven't already done so. Now for my lunch I prepare toast with cream cheese, mustard and dill sauce with smoked salmon topped with some more dill. You can never have too much dill or perhaps that's the Estonian in me talking. Either way it was rather delish. I had my lunch and spent about an hour and a half uploading and editing the footage from this morning. And then it was time for my second client who came in with a colour on her nails that I for sure did not apply three weeks ago when she left the salon with chrome coral nails. As a hairdresser she accidentally popped on her tint covered gloves inside out therefore her nails got stained and then she said she popped on some pink nail varnish. Well let me put it this way whichever nail varnish it is it's revolutionary because that was not coming off so we can all make our own conclusions here. Quickly realising that acetone wasn't going to remove this nail varnish, <coughs> gel polish, <coughs> I went in with the penny drill bit, removing all product down to her clear builder gel layer, and then I prepped the nails for infill, etching over the regrowth, shaping the nails, doing all the cuticle work, and then I went in with a coat of pure bond before I went in with pure foundation and clear, and then my second coat of pure foundation um, to build the nails up. And then I'm removing the sticky residue and refining the nails. This time we went for black. The one I'm using is the Jill Bottles Jet Black, of which I did two coats of before top coating it with matte top coat. And then we did a shiny French using shiny top coat. I actually didn't manage to capture any footage of the finished nails, unfortunately. But in fairness, we applied cuticle oil, which of course is shiny. And where that went on the mat, it would have taken an absolute age to get it cleaned off the nails properly and to get a good shot. Sometimes you do get in syndrome not wanting to keep your client back too much especially when you've done nail art as well so anyway we finished with hand cream and a little hand massage and then I just cleaned up after this client sanitizing her files using IPA and a brush before popping them back in her little file box to use for next time and I do use the navy nail filing system Nail files and their storage is a very controversial topic, but I personally have been using this system for around 3-4 years and it works for me. So giving everything a wipe over, the armrest, the nail lamp, the table and my nail brush, I keep a little towel folded up covered with kitchen roll to clean my brush when I'm doing nail art or cleaning up around the nails. I noticed my Nunu, in other words my nail dust extractor Salon Air by Vodex, wasn't being quite as effective as it normally is so I'm going to give her a little clean out and change her filter. Taking the lid off and as you can see she's pretty full of nail dust. So first thing I do is get a plastic bag and have it ready to pop the filter in. So gently lifting an edge I'm starting to roll up the filter with all the nail dust in it like a swiss roll. Being really careful not to disturb and lift the nail dust into the air and then that goes straight into the bin bag. 
Lots of residue around the edges, so with my hoover and a narrow pointy attachment, I'm getting right in there and sucking up all that nail dust. Then I'm taking all the rest of the filters out and I'm going to start from the very bottom. Normally there's nothing at the base but I'm giving it a little hoover over anyway. And then using Sephora Antibac Nectarine and Vanilla Scented Spray which I picked up from Home Bargains. Oh it smells beautiful. I'm wiping over the base and up the sides. Then I'm cleaning the inner casing and these are really heavy to lift you know. I'm going to clean that and then pop it back in. The very bottom filter, this is the deep bed carbon uh, filter it's called, I'm wiping over and popping it back in. And then a HEPA high efficiency particulate air filter goes back in giving it a wipe over before realising that it started to snow quite literally. Um, so I brought out the bin bag and really should have just gotten a bigger bag but anyway we're rolling with it. <laughs> I'm just giving this filter a really good spanking. Look how much came out. My gosh. But we're not done yet. While this isn't a glamorous job to do, this filter does cost a hundred and 19 pounds including that so you bet i'm going to be spanking the life out of it or the dust out of it shall we say <laughs> as opposed to ordering a new one straight away i will at some point though yikes but she's got more life in her for now then for some reason as opposed to getting up and getting the hoover and changing the attachment it made more sense in my brain to spray all this dust down and wipe it away anyway now that that filter is no longer snowing i'm going to pop it back in with a quick hoover over then for the very top filter frame because the edges are velcro for the filter to stick to it so I'm trying to clean it with some kitchen roll which wasn't doing a very good job so I picked up my little nail brush and that worked a dream getting right in there and I will dispose of this once finished hoover over a quick wipe and back in it goes now let's grab a nice new filter for her and we're just gonna pop it in I'm just giving it a really good press down to attach it onto the velcro Wiping over the inside of the lid as well as the outside and I'm going to pop it back on. Last but not least I'm giving her a little spray down on the outside, a little wipe over and boop she is done nice and clean. Now I had a bin in this corner and where I've been waxing Reese's eyebrows I've thrown a wax stick in the bin and obviously missed it. So it was stuck on the floor so I'm just cleaning that up and then I'm organising these wires out. Number one pain in the for us nail technicians eh? However, before putting Nunu back, I am going to hoover and go over the floor with my flush speed mop. You guys, I moved into my home salon in August last year and we fully redid everything in this room, including this floor. I'm just reconnecting the extraction arms. I have the double one, so I'm connecting the one that goes to my desktop and the other one is the overhead one. But yeah, as I was saying, I am still not over this floor. We put it down throughout the house as well and I'm just obsessed with it. We searched high and low for a wood effect floor that was not too brown, not too light, not too grey, like a neutral sort of wood effect. We found this in B&Q and we were hesitant to get it because we wanted a really good quality floor and so we searched all the fancy expensive flooring shops as well but nothing compared to this floor we found in B&Q so that's what we went ahead with and we do not regret this decision. And in the end we got our really good quality flooring, it's coming up to a year and it's brand new, no problems with it, no scratches, nothing. So if you're considering B&Q flooring it's a yes from us. While mopping away, I realised that the Chloe chair base was looking dusty and so I gave it a quick wipe over and then I finished off the mopping and this was the pad when I finished. Yikes, but it's so satisfying though. <laughs> I should mention as well, Reese laid all our flooring, he's a man of many talents. Let me know if you'd like to see the video of the process of us doing up the salon. Quick freshen up of Freya's throne which used to be used for doing pedicures but I cannot do them anymore because of my back. So I'm going to nip out of the salon quickly. I need to fill up the car. I 
and I've just turned the engine on and I've realised what we're down to. So I'm going to go and fill up the car and then I'm going to go to our kind of local beauty suppliers called Capital and I am going to get a new pair of cuticle nippers because my navy ones have broken and I've not even had them for a year so I'm going to contact them and see if they can do something about it because I am positive there's a 12 month warranty on them so see what they say um, and I also need some acetone so yeah Straight away I'm grabbing the acetone. Now Capital, or the one close to me anyway, has recently started stocking glitter bells. Can't lie, the temptation was overpowering but I remained a good girl and didn't do it. <laughs> Stick to the plan. Um, just picking up the cuticle nippers. And I'm back and I've got the goods. We got one bottle of acetone, two bottles of acetone, three bottles of acetone, four bottles of acetone and then I got some more barbicide to disinfect my tools and cuticle nippers. I actually do have a couple spare ones but they're quite blunt so I thought I'd get new ones for the time being and hopefully Navy can sort me out with a new pair because the way they broke is quite unusual. I'll let you guys see if I can get it out. So one of the sort of, what would you call it, like the metal sort of mechanism bits has completely came away. So, and it's broke away up here. Yeah, I've never had this happen with any cuticle nipper. But we've got a new pair anyway to keep me going until this gets resolved. And if any of you guys use Navy, you'll know these are not cheap. I believe these are £58 with VAT on top of it. So I think it's something like £60-£70 it works out. So not cheap. So it's quarter to five now and I have done my two clients for today and I've just came back from Capital Hair and Beauty. I've got the cuticle nippers and the acetone. I went out with the mindset I'll get new cuticle nippers because the extra ones that I have are quite blunt. So I did actually have a little go at these new cuticle nippers and my god are they blunt. When you're used to using the best of the best which I believe is navy, leave your suggestions down below if you recommend there's anything better than that because I'd like to see. Um, but my god, they're blunt. So yeah, I hope all the situation gets fixed soon. I'll just need to see how I go with these cuticle numbers for now. Post editing Agnes here. I can confirm Navy has sent out replacement springs, which is the official term for these parts, and it just took a few days from sending them the email to receiving them in the post. Anyway, all that aside, if you watch my videos, you would know that I am quite catty. I quite enjoy doing some little projects and for the longest time I have wanted to start up my own online shop. So over the past couple of months I have dedicated quite a lot of my time to research and developing my website and working on some products to put on the website. So I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of what it is exactly that I've been working on. We have these clear acrylic shape charts which you can just keep on your tabletop or on a shelf, display it somewhere in your salon for your clients to have a clear reference to what nail shape they want and they look really smart. So yeah, I think these are super fun. So it's been a lot, a lot of dedication and time invested. The hardest part actually has been coming up with a name and I think I'm settled on my name and my logo. I'm not going to disclose that just yet. Yeah, it's all really exciting. So with that being said, I am going to dedicate the rest of my day to doing bits and bobs for the website. I don't actually know where to start. If you watch my room tour video, my salon is over there through the wall and I'm in the back room, which is essentially our utility room, but I use it for my office 
and my area for doing little projects and things. I do need to gut this room out at some point. I don't know if I'll end up doing this this evening because it'll end up being a massive job. But I need to make space for this stuff along with other products that I have been busy producing and ordering in. I need to get this room set up and organised because right now it's giving me chaos. So I spent some time tidying up, organised all my website stuff into this cardboard box and at this point I was getting quite a bit of pain and discomfort on my back. Having had a spinal surgery earlier on in the year and with the recovery process being long. So this had been a busy day for me and I hadn't rested my back at all so it's not long until Reese gets home from work at which point I actually call it a day in the salon. I had this black wire pen holder sitting on this this desk which I had got from the range to swap over for the acrylic one for holding my nail brushes. So the acrylic one just gets destroyed by acetone so this is going to look much better on my nail desk. Now I'm just organising this cupboard. You can't really see but I have an entire shelf for candles and diffusers so I'm actually going to take two of these small Aldi diffusers and combine them into another diffuser bottle which has run out. Um, it was actually one of my clients that got me this and I love the bottle so yeah I'm just going to refill it and that makes some more space in my cupboard as well. And at this point Reese got home from work and I called it a day. What's happening YouTube? Look at the child. Freya says hit like and subscribe. Do it now. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Touch the boob. Touch the boob. Touch the boob. <laughs> and here's a snippet of Reese doing his thing. He is really into his cooking. Um, so he is just preparing some meat to marinate for a barbecue, which we're not going to have today. But here he is explaining what he's doing. I find this fascinating. So we're doing a leg of lamb on the barbecue tomorrow. And we'll make a nice oregano, garlic, lemon and a little bit of chilli marinade to go on to it so you get the flavour of the lamb and you know what you're going to do with it? Uh, get it so it's a nice smooth paste and then add my lemon juice, lemon zest, salt and pepper and some oil get a good nice paste going and then get it all over the lamb I'm going to cut some slits into it as well so the flavour it's a big boy. Yeah. Oh, it smells gorgeous. So we had to put Freya scratch post in the kitchen because she's a curious little soul and won't stop meowing if she can't see what's happening. And here she is looking like YB from Coraline. What's this you're doing now? Zesting a lemon. So instead of just getting a lemon juice, getting the zest as well. Because the juice will just cook off whilst it's roasting. Get the fire going about 11 ish and get it on so it can slow roast. Nice. Like six hours, like 150 degrees ish. Slow cooked lamb on the barbecue. Yum. Give it a nice smoky outer crust. Oh, look how perfectly that fits in there. We should start a cooking YouTube. Oh, I've got a cut on my hand. Feel the burn. Babe, it's everywhere. Hold on. Wash that off. Yikes. Oh, this is well done, That's clean. And saying that there's a lot of cleaning to do. And that's all for today guys. If you're still here and watching, thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye!